this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use a Python script to update the roughness detail of a Blender material using noise. This is a great way to add more realism and depth to your material. Hey, I'm Victor Stepanoff. I'll be guiding you through this beginner Blender Python tutorial. Today, we're going to be continuing to work on a Python script that works with Blender materials. I'll provide a link to that video up here. You can watch that video to get the code, or I also provided the code from that video in the description under initial code. You can open that link in your favorite browser, hit raw, and then select the code and copy it. And then let's go back into Blender. And I'm going to go into the shading workspace right here. I'll change this to a text editor, and then I will collapse this. I'll hit new and then I'll paste in the code like so. Now I'm going to go ahead and run this code. And you can see this creates an icosphere in the middle of the scene and applies, applies this material right here. Let's quickly go over the script so we'll be on the same page. The script starts right here uh, where we clean the scene. So make sure that everything is deleted before we start. We create the material with uh, this particular name. We add the mesh, which is the icosphere. Then we apply the material that we created to our uh, mesh object, which is the icosphere. Now, this is the function that represents the icosphere creation. So we're just creating or adding the icosphere in the scene, shading smooth, and then getting a reference to that particular icosphere. Here's the main part of the script where it's working with the material. Uh, we're creating the material right here. Make sh making sure that we're using nodes. We're getting a reference to the principal BSDF node. Then we're setting the base color, metallic, and then uh, roughness. The interesting part of this roughness is that we're using a random value each time we run the script. So we're using the random module and using the uniform function that generates a random number between 0.1 and 1. And uh, at the very top, we have this function that deletes everything and clears the scene for us, right? And at the top, we're importing some of the modules we need uh, to make the script run. All right, to achieve the result that we're looking for, we'll need to apply a noise mask and plug it into the roughness of the principal BSDF shader. We'll be using a color ramp, a noise texture, a mapping node, and a texture coordinate node. Then we'll connect all these nodes together and plug in the color ramp into the roughness socket of the principal BSDF shader. Let's write down these nodes that we need to add as comments into our script. So I'm going to go into the create materials function and I'll start writing my comments right here. I'm creating uh, these comments right here using the hash character. Remember to create comments. This will be ignored by Python when this code is getting executed. So we need the color ramp, the noise, the mapping node, and then the texture coordinate. Let's start off by creating the color ramp node. And here's the code for that. We're using the material reference that we got right here. And then we're accessing the node tree and creating a new node. And I'm using this shader node of val to RGB. That's the un under the hood name for the color ramp. I got this name from the Blender Python documentation. I'll link it in the description. And as soon as we run this command, we're going to get a reference to that node that we created. Let's go ahead and run this code. And as soon as we run this code, you can see that the color ramp node appears right in the middle of the scene. Right, I'm going to collapse this just a bit. And that is the node, right? But uh, since it's getting placed right in the middle, uh, it's not going to be great because it's going to be overlapping with the principal BSDF node. I want it to move the location a bit uh, to the left right here. Uh, let's go ahead and update the code to make that happen. And I'm using the reference to the color ramp node. I'm using the location property and setting the X value of that location property to minus 300. Let's go ahead and run the script and see what that does. And uh, generated the same nodes and placed our color ramp uh, just uh, to the left right here of the principal BSDF node. 
All right, let's go ahead and make that connection between the color ramp and the principal of BSDF uh, roughness socket. I'm going to go ahead and comment this particular uh, piece of code out. And then at the bottom under connect the nodes, I'm going to write the code that connects this particular color ramp uh, like so. So I'm going to use I'm going to use the Python code to connect these two sockets, the color and the roughness. Uh, let's do just that right here. And here is the code. I'm using the reference to the material and getting the node tree and adding a new link. I'm connecting the color ramp and the principal BSDF using the color output. So this output right here and the roughness input socket. So this right here. So as soon as I run this script, uh, you, you're gonna see that these uh, two sockets are gonna get connected. Let's go ahead and run that script. And look at that, now these two sockets are connected and we can control uh, the roughness right here using uh, this color ramp. All right, let's continue updating our script and add the noise texture node right here. And here's the code for the noise texture. Again, I'm looking this up in Blender's documentation. I'm getting the reference to that node and I'm gonna be updating the location. Now, uh, I'm gonna be probably using the same minus 300, so it's gonna be like minus 600, but this is gonna start to be, become a chore, and I wanna create a couple of variables that will allow me to automatically do that calculation for me. And I'm creating two variables right here. One is gonna be tracking the step between each node, and the other one is gonna be tracking the current location on the X axis in the node tree right here and i'm setting that value the initial value to minus uh, this so minus 300 and i'll use this right here to set this as the current value then i'll calculate the next uh, step so i'll just subtract this step again like so and i can use this current value down here and i'll go ahead since i'll be adding more nodes i'll add this right here as well so uh, we will apply that to our mapping node in just a minute. Okay, so this looks that it's gonna work. And as soon as I run the script, we should get another node right here. That's gonna be the noise texture. Let's go ahead and execute the script. And you can see that the noise texture appeared right here. Let's go ahead and connect the color of the noise texture and the fact of the color ramp uh, using our Python script. And here's that connection. It's uh, literally the same code, except we're replacing the uh, noise texture uh, and uh, using the color output socket and plugging that into the color ramp and the fact socket. Let's go ahead and execute that code. And look at that, now we're getting already something interesting. Let me go ahead and add the rest of the nodes. So it's the mapping and the texture coordinate in the, same, in the same way that we added these previous two nodes. And nothing really changed here. I'm again looking up the names of those nodes in the documentation, adding the node, updating the location, updating the current, oh, this is a mistake, so this is current value. So using the current location, updating that current location and using it here. Again, uh, this is pretty similar to what we just did above that. And let's go ahead and execute our script. And you can see that we add, have the texture coordinate and the mapping node. Now uh, we just need to connect all these right here. And the code is very similar to the one that we wrote, the code that we wrote just a couple lines above that. Uh, we're connecting the mapping and the noise uh, texture node by using the vector uh, sockets. So as you can see that there's a vector socket here and a vector socket here, and we're just connecting those uh, two sockets. And with the texture coordinate, so this node right here, we're connecting the generated and the vector uh, input right here with these two, uh, with this line right here. Let's go ahead and execute our script. And look at that right away, we have that all connected. Okay, now we have this result. You can see that there's uh, the roughness is not even across the surface of this icosphere. 
And the next step that I want to do is I want to use this color ramp to control uh, the roughness and make like these roughness islands, if you will, something like this. And I'm going to use Python code again to set the values for these two elements right here. And we're, we're going to need to find the color ramp node code right here that we're using. And then I'll I'll update the ends of these two elements. And here's the code for uh, that. I'm, I added these two lines. We're accessing the color ramp itself. Uh, we're accessing these uh, two elements. So this is element zero, this is element one, and we're just modifying the position and setting it to uh, a value that we want. And that's that. Let's go ahead and execute the script. Watch as soon as I update, I run the script, these positions are going to be updated and look at that you can see straight away that this is already something different all right now our create material function is getting bigger and we want to keep things nicely organized let's extract the code that's creating this uh, noise mask into a separate function and call it create noise mask i'm going to go ahead and select this code right here i'm going to hit uh, the control X to cut this code and I'll go up here and create my new function I've added a documentation string to remind me what exactly is happening in this function again this is not this right here won't be read by Python it's for anyone who's looking at this code uh, and let's go ahead and return the color ramp uh, right here and I want to make this particular connection outside of this function because it's using the principal BSDF node and roughness. I want to kind of clearly communicate that uh, the color ramp is kind of the result of our create a noise mask function. And we're using that to connect that to the principal BSDF. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and copy that. Uh, and I'm going to go down here, paste that in that connection. I'm going to create a function call. So I'm going to select this and I will paste that in. So now we're calling that function and we're returning the color ramp reference to the node and using it straight away uh, right here. Fine. And let's go ahead and check that everything still runs after our refactoring. And that does like that it's working actually you know what let me just double check it since we're not updating any parameters it looks exactly the same i want to make sure that everything is working yes it is all right and if you're enjoying this tutorial and learning something new make sure to hit the like button i'll greatly appreciate it okay now let's do a couple of exercises to solidify your knowledge for your very first exercise i want you to go ahead and figure out how you can update the scale of the noise texture right here. So as I change this texture right here, the scale, you can see that it's updating that result. And I want you to do this through Python code. So go ahead and pause the video now and try to update the, this field on your own. And as soon as you're done, Go ahead and check back and I'll show you how I would have done it. To update the scale of a noise texture node, uh, we can look at how we did the updating of the fields of the principal BSDF uh, node. And we did it by using the inputs dictionary right here and using the name of that particular field that we, uh, of that particular socket that we want to update. And in this particular case, it's the scale. By the way, if you, oh, if you select the Python tooltips in the interface menu of, of Blender, uh, you can get a tooltip while you're hovering over that particular field that you want to update. You'll get a reference to what the code is going to be looking like when you do that update. Another tip is if you use the info panel uh, down below, you add that right here, and then you update that scale, you're going to get some code right here that will represent that, that change that you just did. I'm going to go ahead and just copy that. I'm going to go in and find the noise texture and I'll paste that in. Uh, so I don't need a reference 
do the material and the node tree. So this is exactly the same thing as that node noise texture node variable. And so that is two. Uh, and we're, let's update that in just a minute. I'm going to set this to uh, 10 and look as soon as I run the script. This is set to 10. All right. And instead of using uh, the index of the Im uh, input socket, I really like to use the names for these uh, input sockets so it's clear when we're working. So if you're familiar how that input socket looks on the node itself, uh, you can use that name uh, right here like so. So let's send, set this to 20 and let that run. And as, as you can see, that also works. And for your second exercise, it's going to be a two-parter. The first part is I want you to set this scale to a random value between 1 and 20. Next, I want you to update the rotation on the x, y, and z of the mapping node and set that to a random rotation between 0 and 360. All right. Go ahead and pause the video now and try that on your own. And as soon as you're done, go ahead and come back and see how I would have done it. All right, let's see how this looks from my point of view. I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this random uniform that we used uh, before for the roughness. And I'm gonna set this right here. I'm gonna set, so as I said, from one uh, to 20. 20 and let's see how that works. I'm going to go ahead and start running the script and you can see that each time we're executing the script that we get a different scale uh, for this noise texture. This is great. Look, looks different each time. All right, now let's go ahead and update the mapping node right here. And we need to generate a random value for X, Y, and Z. And here is that code. And I'm accessing the rotation and setting the default values for X, Y, and Z. And getting a random value between 0 and 360. And remember that Blender requires us to provide value, rotation values in radians. And this is what I'm doing here. So this is in degrees. And we're inputting that degree value into this math radians uh, right here and this converts the degrees into radians now for this to work we need to import the math module i believe that it's not imported at the top and i'm going to add that import right here and i added a comment as well to signify what we're importing here and let's go ahead and see how this works i'm going to highlight this mapping and so this each time will be different as we run the script let's go ahead and execute that and look at that we're getting random values each time we run our script and for more tutorials like this make sure to subscribe and next check out this video right here thank you so much for watching